Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today we're going to study why Christians should celebrate Shavuot. Yes, it's one of the feasts of our Lord and it has incredible significance to each one of us, yet I have never been encouraged to celebrate it before. Well, this year I am, and I wanted to share with you why I'm celebrating it and some of the tips that I'm going to do in our celebration here at our home. I just want to say thanks for watching and if you haven't already and you're watching this on YouTube please go ahead and hit the subscribe the like and the bell that helps us stay connected and build a relationship and I'm trying to keep up with all of the comments and respond to you as quickly as I can and so I'm enjoying reading your comments and I'm enjoying seeing some people comment on many videos because I feel like I'm getting to know you so thank you for doing that. I also want to encourage you to share this video with your friends and, your, and maybe people from your church or people not from church. Because together as Christians, we need to understand God's word and celebrating the feast of our Lord is part of that. Yes. All right. So let's get started. Have you ever wanted to connect the Old Testament with the New Testament in a way that your kids are always going to remember it? Or maybe you can always remember it. Celebrating the Feast of Our Lord is the best teaching tool that we as parents and grandparents can use to instill in the hearts of our children all that God is and why it matters. I still remember stories that were told to me when I was just really young. In fact, when I was in grade school, now called elementary school, our music teacher was actually a music leader at his church. So our musical in fourth grade was Daniel in the lion's den. I can still sing those songs and I remember all of the actions. It really stuck to my mind and I just treasured it in my heart. Well, the same is true today as we teach God's word to our children and we let them sing the songs and read the stories and enact the stories and then celebrate the stories, they too will never forget. Well, Shavuot is one of those favorite stories to relive, and that's why God has set it aside as one of the feasts of our Lord. In fact, it was so important that God commanded that all the Jewish men to come to Jerusalem every year to celebrate Shavuot. Well, but why is Shavuot so important to us today? That's just a biblical thing. Well, I'm glad you asked. So this is my personal take on Shavuot and why we as Christians should celebrate it every year. So I've got five tips I want to share with you. Number one, fire, thunder, lightning. <laughs> All right. When the giving of the law, Shavuot is a reminder of God's laws written on the tablets of stone. It helps us to always be reminded how God delivered the laws to Moses on Mount Sinai. And read as a family, go into and read Exodus 20 verse 18. And it says lightning flashes and thunder and smoke quote fire. Sound familiar? Well, it is believed through Jewish teachings that Moses received the law on the 50th day after Passover. Remember, they left Egypt at Passover. Look at Exodus 19.1. Now, also note that when Moses came down from the mountain 40 days later, there was a golden calf waiting for him, and God was angry. Well, on that day, around 3,000 were killed. God is very serious about his words and his promises. Well, that takes us to number two, promises delivered. Shavuot is being celebrated in the book of Acts as the disciples plus many more people were together and God delivered his promise right out of the book of John. Let's look at John 4, 23. But an hour is coming and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And then move into John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, he, is, he will teach you all things and bring to your, this is the part I love, your remembrance all that I said to you. That's reason enough to celebrate the Feast of Weeks, which is also Shabbat. We need, to, we, we need reminders of what God has given us. We needed the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance all that God's word teaches us. Because remember, he, he says this, and then 10 days later, Jesus delivers his promise. 
and he's still delivering on his promises today. And Shavuot is about deliverance from bondage and also deliverance from the evil of this world. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Pentecost. Well, Shavuot is when God gave the law written in the hearts of the people through the Holy Spirit. So now that takes us to number three, languages. Now in my upbringing, we rarely talked about Pentecost because it brought up that hard to answer question about tongues. <laughs> okay. Well, this is really not hard to explain when it is learned in the context of the original language of the time. When God delivered the tablets of stone, the laws, the laws in Exodus 20, it says that the people perceived that the thunder and the lightning and the flashes and, and the sound of the trumpet and the, and the mountain smoking. <laughs> and when all the people saw it, they trembled and they just stood at a distance. This thundering is each person hearing God's voice. The tongues in Acts is the languages to spread the gospel to all of the people. The Israelites on the mountain were hearing God speak. The people outside the room where the disciples and all of the people were gathered were being given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, the people outside were hearing the gospel for the first time in their own language. People were traveling, had traveled from miles and miles around to be there in Jerusalem. Remember, it was, it was called upon. They had to be there. And there's some authorities that say there were over a million people there in Jerusalem that day. And it very well could be true. Those around the room, as sound travels outside the room, they heard the gospel. And those hearing it were being saved in their own language. Remember, they traveled from all different vicinities. And about three thousand were saved that day. It was never about a confusion of tongues. That's just a totally mis misinterpretation. Tongues means languages, and it was and always is about the gospel. And the people who needed to hear it heard it in their language. Today, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel to all people. God will supply the words, and we're not to let nationalities or languages cause us to hesitate our call. That takes us to number four, Thanksgiving. Shavuot is about a feast of Thanksgiving, thanking God for the harvest. Remember the book of Ruth? It was the barley harvest, and then we have the wheat harvest. Well, people were bringing gifts as a sacrifice, gifts of produce. Well, we too need to celebrate with the feast of Thanksgiving, thanking God for the, the complete assurance that through the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have a helper. Teaching our kids about the Holy Spirit and how it guides us on a daily basis, that is reason to have Feast of Thanksgiving. And number five, leaven. Leaven at Passover, remember we removed it from the entire home. It represented sin in our lives. In Shavuot, we're given a new leaven. Leaven means teachings. And Yeshua explained that leaven represents teachings. And we are not to be learning from those Pharisees, which could include today traditions or doctrines. We are instead to learn from God's word. In the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study, in the first chapter, we discuss how there is so much to unlearn as there is to learn. As we study scriptures for ourselves and we teach our kids to do the same, the Holy Spirit will guide us. There are many gifted and blessed teachers that we can learn from. Yet, always know the Word of God is the final authority. As you celebrate Shavuot, it doesn't have to be in a, the traditional Jewish nature. That's fine if it is. That would be great. What we're going to do here is we're just going to celebrate with music and singing and sharing praises, everything that God's been doing in their life, enjoying a feast, fellowship, and then reading the story of Ruth with some fun annex that I've added in, and then moving on to praying for our nation and for Israel. 
consider Acts 2.42. And it says, and they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone kept f f uh, feeling, feeling, sorry, feeling a sense of awe. And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. Well, later in chapter 3, a man was healed. And verse 8, it says, I love this verse, with a leap, he stood upright and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Well, this is why we celebrate the feast of our Lord. We are to live in such a way that people say, hey, do you not realize times are really hard? Why are you walking around and leaping and praising God? Did you not know that our gas was all shut down this week? Did you not hear the, the, all of the COVID deaths? Did you not hear there's bombs going off in Israel? Yeah, I know. I know. But I also know the God who knows all and loves me beyond all measure. And I know he has a plan. So I'm going to be walking and leaping and praising God. And this came after, remember, after they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking bread, and to prayer. That is what starts us on this journey. That is what invigorates us. Now, the Bible is not just great stories. It is Jesus in real time. So that's what we're going to be doing at our celebration. We're going to be having music and praises, and we're going to spend time sharing what God is doing in our lives. But we're not going to stop there But it's because it's great to do that and to remember what God has done in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and in our Testament today. But it's also a moment of revival, a revival in our heart, a revival in our mind, because God is still at work. These feasts of our Lord are to remind us of what He did and what He's coming to do. And that's why I want you to celebrate the Feast of Shavuot. I want you to celebrate, and then I want your celebration to also be about prayer, prayer for revival in your heart. Take those laws of stone and create just a place in your heart for God's law to permeate your heart. I want you to just celebrate, but I also want you to be praying for Israel. I want you to be praying for your family. I want you to be praying for how God is going to use you to, to speak to any language in this world. That is why I want you to celebrate the Feast of Shavuot. And I can't believe it's taken me this many years to get excited about this feast. But the more I talk about it, the more I share it with you, I just can't wait. I can't wait. We have people coming over. I, I think I better buy more food. I, we might have a bigger showing than I expected. I hope you do the same, even if it's just with your family. Thank you for letting me share with you my passion that if we want to have a healthy life, it comes with three ingredients. Understand, I want you to be confident in the kitchen, yes. I want you to be confident with your health, yes. But more importantly, I want you to be confident in understanding that God loves you. He's loved you from the moment of conception. He still loves you today, no matter what. And we get to celebrate that love as we come back and we come to the table and we devote ourselves to studying God's word and to praying and breaking bread. Don't forget the bread. And that's the bread that I teach you, not that white fake stuff, okay? I'm Annette Reader from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com, and it's been my joy to share with you God's recipe for excellent health, and that always includes God's Word. Thanks for watching. My husband's doctor was writing prescriptions faster than our hearts were beating with stress. Yet, could there be another way? Is there another answer? Well, that is when a friend suggested to me, Annette, go back into God's Word, start reading it differently, and start with the Daniel Fast. Well, those words changed the trajectory of our lives. And 30 days later, we were prescription free, 35 pounds lighter, combined total, lower cholesterol, lower triglycerides, and we knew that God had answered our prayer for greater health His way. Now, if you are praying for an answer on how to get started, I highly recommend the Daniel Fast. First, go to the BiblicalNutritionAcademy.com website Click on the Daniel Fast and sign up. It's that easy. Plus, the link will be in the show notes below.